Jane. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Great. Are you gonna go play block around tonight? Yeah, you gonna come along? Yeah! All right, let's go! go. <laughs> Hey, Keith from Beat the Casino. Right here we are live in Las Vegas on Fremont Street. We're having a great time playing blackjack and baccarat. Come on down, join our club. Okay, I wanted to clarify a couple things here. I'm going to start with a new scorecard. And I did a game online. And I want to show you how some of these statistics, uh, I think, really help you. Here, we're, I, I just recorded this online game. And, and so... One of the things I want to track is, I think, hit cards um, and, and the statistic of hand, hand totals uh, by the mode is, is very important. So, so this, this first hand we're watching play here, uh, um, I'll put up the scorecard. It was a tie. So I just wrote the, the two hit cards in and, and circled. An uncircled one means it was a tie. Okay. So we'll go ahead and watch the next hand. And, um, and she deals it out. So the first one obviously was insignificant. Here we have a six against a seven. So we're going to mark it up on the scorecard as obviously there were no hits, but it was a player six against a seven. And just put a little tick box there just to keep keep track of who's getting what hands. Okay, here's the next one. I cut it out to make it go faster. So we get a five on a hit, which takes the player up to eight. We hit the bank with a ten. Okay, and we do the, we do the tick box again, and player one, and I circled it with a five because they both hit, but the five was the hit card. Okay, so here's the next hand that we're playing, and I'm looking for something if very specific, well, not very specific, but two general uh, things. One is how many uh, hands. Uh, low hands and how many high hands they have and what the hit cards are, specifically tens. Okay, so here we have a ten that was a hit card and, and uh, Banker won that hand. Okay, so we, we mark that up and, uh, and go from there and there's how the card pans out again. We'll take a look at the next hand. We have two against one and we'll hit the player. Hits with a three up to five Hits eight and then up to nine. So banker wins uh, nine with a nine over five. And our scorecard looks like this. But nothing really unusual. Of course, we haven't seen a lot of hands. When I was playing at the Rivers, I would usually watch about uh, between 10 and 15 hands before I made a bet trying to track this. Now we have seven and then uh, three. Of course, we'll hit the bag here up to nine. So the banker may be coming a little strong. You know, needless to say, statistically, it's not enough. I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> we're going to track the hit cards here soon. Uh, I'll put it all in. But I kind of wanted to get the feel of how you go ahead and uh, stem and leaf chart the totals first, and then how you put the circles in the hit cards uh, and who wins in, in the chart. We'll take a look at one more here now. It's zero to seven and the bank hits, or the, I'm sorry, the player hits to a nine. So if you take a look at that, we put the nine in, we circled it. Now I put, I went back and I put all the hit cards in. Okay. And notice the player has two zeros and banker has one. Okay. Let's go ahead and play seven. So player's going to stand on six. We're going to hit the bank with a tray. We have another tie hand. We'll go ahead and update the scorecard here. Okay. And I marked up the three as a hit card, but nothing circled because it was a tie. Okay, here's the next hand. And of course, bank's going to stand on six, and bank or a player does it. Player and banker wins six over seven. So we'll update the scorecard. I think I missed updating that one. I'll catch it on the next one. I stuck the wrong card in. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so here's the next hand. There we have a zero against a banker's five. Now remember what you always yell when there you want player to hit monkey, right? Isn't that what we got there? So we'll go ahead and, and mark that up. Ten and the banker one again. I think I missed one. I don't really think it matters that much. One one hand. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we have a seven and here we have a two. Three and then zero. We're going to make, take the player up to nine, and the banker to three, and of course, player wins again. Let's take a look at one more hand here. Here we go. We have a four, five, ten. And we have a natural eight on bank. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so a couple things here at this point. I guess we have 10 or 11 hands here. The, the first thing notice is his banker is a little strong. Um, you know, one, it has uh, at the stem and leaf chart here, uh, just, you know, so far as eights and nines and natural, seven eights and nines pretty much evened up. Same with sixes and fives and sixes. So, so this part is is generally random, okay? So, so if there's any bias at all, it's going to come with the hit cards, okay? Now, ten is probably the worst hit card you can get unless you're on banker, right? Unless banker's ahead, because when you're playing baccarat, how many times do you yell monkey? Okay, we never really think about that, but that hit card on the player, we're always looking for the hand not to improve. So it's one of the most, I think, significant statistics. And, and you know, trust me here, I, 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 I've let many others take the lead, but I've been playing for 40 years, and I, I can't tell you how many times I've yelled, I want a monkey. Why? Because I'm on bank, and I, 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 I need the hand not to improve. And I, I, a lot of times you sit there and, and, and you almost know when you're going to win when you're on banker, don't you? Why? Because you, you anticipate a 10. And so that is the most significant card for me. And I noted here with the amount of low hands we have on either side. First of all, notice that player has a couple more. Just one, actually. Okay. Five, five could get grouped with with a little higher hand, but they both hit on that. So I, I always I always group them, um, uh, you know, with lower hands. Um, but in in any event, here we have a two, a zero, and a four, and we only have one three on the banker's side. Okay. The other thing that's significant when you keep this statistic too is notice the player has hit three times with a zero. Well, if you hit the player three times with a zero. That hand isn't getting any better, okay? So I think that's I think that's very important when you're playing to know not to know that, but just to observe that. How many times you hit what is the hit card when you're hitting the most? And if player gets a ten or a zero, I'm sorry, that's usually not gonna help him, okay? So at this point, I would say that this game here is probably at some point gonna favor banker and there's going to be a streak of banker at some point and it, it you know I, I've always had more success betting things will happen than betting against things will not happen like negative progressions and all that so at this point in the game what I did at the rivers on a number of occasions is uh, probably in, in after I, I watched the game a little bit there seemed to be this bias developed where the hit cards were always either numbers or they were tens or there was one of them that always came up a little bit more for some unknown reason if they can influence the game it is done with hit cards how else could they do it okay so so i think we got all tied up with looking at two and three in a rows and four in a rows and and, and and that's good stuff. I think there's more to come of it with all that. But I think we ought to start looking at it. And that's why I'm trying to get people interested in this thread to get some more thought involved. Um, is we have numbers 
in, in statistics that are that are quantifiable in the game that we're ignoring. We're all, we're only just looking at events. And if you're looking at events, you come on, you're looking at patterns. Yes, I know we assign values to it, but very very general in very general terms. They're giving us specific data, and I think we need to to look at it, especially with with respect to hit cards and any pattern that may develop it. Because if you're hitting your hand with zeros and ones, chances are you're probably not beating the game. <laughs> you're not going to win. And if there's any bias to that, that's where I think it is to be found. So it's it's a theory. Well, it's not even a theory. It's probably just a hypothesis, just from playing and playing and playing and playing, and trying to come up with some other ways. And, and just anecdotally, when I'm talking to other players, I remember playing uh, with John out at uh, out at the Aria and Michael. And I said, if we get another 10 on our hit, I'm just going to go through the chair. Because inevitably, every time we hit a 10 on, on our hand, if we were on player, it, it just didn't help us out at all. So um, so I noticed it, and I, I started looking at this a li lot, lot more closely. And I hope I get others interested in, in tracking these a couple more statistics like this. And, of course, you know, it's inspired from Kevin, who's looking at many, many other uh, facets of the game, too. But anyway, to my point here... Notice um, here, player has three zeros, okay, and banker only has one, and there's a little bit pretty close to even with anything with respect to higher number hands, okay, so we're going to break even on those. The lower hands, though, if you hit them with a 10, you're not going to win as much, okay, so, and if you hit the other hands with number cards, Okay, well, here's a zero, but here's a seven, here's an eight, here's a six, here's a two. Now, two, three, and three are definitely going to improve a hand, although in this case, it didn't really seem to improve it enough, did it? But they're going to improve the banker's side hand, even just a little bit. Uh, so so there's, I, I know we're looking at the game with a lot of different variables, and you kind of got to come up with your own approach, but I wanted you to start taking a look at most significantly how many times... A side hits with a zero. Okay. Now, with that said, okay, I'm going to play you the next four hands of this shoe. Okay. And I want you to make up your own judgments. I, I want your own observations with this. Okay. Because I think it's significant. I think the fact that we always yell monkey in the game of Baccarat is significant. And we're missing the real significance of it. So give it some thought and let me know your thoughts on, on this thread that I'm talking about. I'd really be interested in it. And I'll, I'll play some more games and I'll, I'll try to, uh, you know, further the, the hypothesis a little bit more uh, with hit cards and watching for biases with hit cards. Okay, so here's the next four hands of that shoe.
Okay, hey, I'm here with Jeremiah, one of our top players from BeatTheCasino.com. Jeremiah, did you have a good time playing tonight? I had a great time. Did you win some money? I won a lot of money. All right, would you tell anyone to join? If you are not a member, you have got to join up. It All is right. the best out there. Hey, don't forget to check out our website for the latest Baccarat and Blackjack information. We have players from all over the world. The best players in the world are members of our website. You could be a member too. Don't forget, BeatTheCasino.com.